What's going on, guys? Welcome to Two Dudes, One Car. Don't watch the video. <laughs> yeah, just click off now. This is uh, Alejandro, a.k.a. Salamandran. And, and Mr. Parker Nearest. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. This is cool. We've been talking about needing to do something for a while together. We've been friends for a long time now, and I'm excited for this. It feels so. it feels like a decade, but it hasn't been a decade, that's for sure. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Exactly. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, I, I met him last week. Absolutely. <laughs> We met at a bust up. We can't tell you what we did. Wait, yeah, what? Well, we came up with the name of the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> By the way, we had a great episode one. We yeah. had a, 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 a lot of things to cover. But I think right now uh, we want to get more into the actual nitty gritty of the car market. Uh, 100%. Or basically the car space. And also I want to, at the end, if we have some time, go over F1. Because yeah, yeah. you like F1. I like F1. 100%. And I feel like everybody likes F1. And we can we can just chat about it because you know it's on it's on Netflix so now women watch it. Can I tell you something before we start? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry no, to please. completely devi deviate from please. it. The reason why Drive to Survive is so successful is number one, you take the helmet off the people, and now you can relate it to to other people, right? Now you're seeing the driver rather than just seeing a guy lapping around 39 yeah, yeah. million times. But mostly it's because of women. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I mean it's impressive the amount of attendance from. Women. Yeah, female attendance and the reason, versus, the, you know, you know our analytics. I mean, it's, it's like 99.99999 It's a sausage guys. fest. It's sausage so. party, the movie, times three. So this is our drive to survive. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, mainly, it's mainly women. Like, my wife loves watching it. Yeah, yeah. There's Carlos Sainz, who's a very good-looking Spaniard. Then Charles Leclerc. Then all of these fucking good-looking motherfuckers that are incredibly rich and incredibly talented and fit. Of course, women are melting. Of yeah. course, their vaginas are fucking dropping all of that water into the ground. Of course. This is course. what's happening on this channel. It is so. what's happening, literally. <laughs> it is what's happening, literally. So, last time that we were chatting, you wanted to ask me something, and we didn't have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hit me with it. Right before that, we're trying to post, what, twice a week? Once on my channel, once on his channel. That is right. So, I've got a link. Uh, to his channel below. So check that out. It's a pretty Thank hilarious uh, episode. I think I so. can say that because his jokes made me laugh, not because I added <laughs> anything that was funny Shut to it. Shut the fuck up. But uh, yeah, so I think a lot of people are curious. At one point, you had a ridiculous amount of cars, and then you took a step back from YouTube, kind of got rid of everything. Now you're coming back full force. I know you didn't leave, but some people, I feel like, felt like you took a step away from YouTube and the car world. But I kind of feel like I did too. Yeah, yeah. So what, ma what made you decide, all right, you know what? This is too many cars. I need to, I need to just take a step back. I think for the cars, just the cars was simple, was the pandemic. Yeah. That was retarded. I've never in my life. By the way, I'm a person that has two very strong. Well, I used to have, uh, uh, and it took me years to get it, like a very strong business side and a very strong creative side, right? Mm -hmm. Which being very creative, it's also being very in touch with yourself, if you will. Sure. So I had developed those really strong parts of my personality and everyday doing in life. And when the pandemic hit, I realized that I hadn't really developed my own self. Like there was a lot missing in my personal life. And while the pandemic was going on, I started more thinking about myself and what made me happy mm -hmm. and what I could do for everyone. And then I remember just looking at these fucking cars just sitting there and collecting dust in the yeah, garage. Yeah. And we couldn't go anywhere. And I was getting really fat every day, fatter and fatter. It was quite the time. And I was saying, this is the stupidest fucking thing in the world. The world's at a standstill right now. People are dying, at least that's what they're telling us. And I have all these cars just sitting here, and that's that's my life. Like, I, I felt very empty at that point. I wish that you could clone yourself for nothing other than being able to drive all your cars at once. Because that's the one oh thing. Oh, my God. It sounds way. insane to have 10 awesome cars, but you can only drive one at a time. I used to so. have 17. And that, oh was, and that was, at some point, I had 17 wow. at the same time. Yeah, and yeah. that's absolutely retarded. Yeah, it's, uh, you can't use it. No, from, from an ego perspective, I feel like it strokes it's cool. the ego. It's cool, and then it's not cool. No, I think it, it, listen, the people that have like a million cars, whatever. Yeah, not saying but, I'm not jealous. No, 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 that that's awesome. Yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong and blah blah blah, and you can't enjoy it. But you gotta have so much fucking disgusting money to just be like, 
I just have nowhere else to put it. Yeah, yeah. And also, you also need to have because in 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 uh, you also need to have your life made in a way. Like you already got to a certain point where money will never be again an object sure, in sure. your life. Whereas to me is I get to certain goals and I take a step back and I'm like, what can I do now? Yeah, like yeah, I was yeah. a filmmaker and then I stopped. What can I once I got successful and it, it was too easy. The last three movies that I made, I made them. I, I've never watched them. I never did anything for production. It took me two phone calls to put them together. The finance with the creative and the everything. So my name is on three movies I've never in my fucking life. Uh, have seen because it was really? so easy to do it. Yeah, because it was so fucking easy to do it. I don't like easy. I like the hard way, which is really stupid, by the way, because once everything is easy, it's easy. It's more rewarding to do it the difficult way. Though. I, yes, and that's part of like, that's always been me. Me, But it's also a problem when you live with someone, you have a wife, she's like, you already have this. What the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Why are you changing your life? Why do you want to talk about business now in your podcast and this shit? Like, fuck that. Stick to whatever you're good at. And I understand that. But as far as the cars go, it was mostly the pandemic. But yeah, as far yeah. as YouTube goes, which is what I got really, really tired of, mm -hmm. it was a combination of the Senna stuff and not understanding really how stupid just reading comments is. Yeah, it, it will destroy you. It was just like everybody's like, this guy's a, a, an insurance fraud and he's committing a crime. And I've always had that because I'm Mexican and I get it. It's part of like the the what's installed in everyone's brain. When I remember when Motor Trend announced Mexican collector is doing a Pagani Vira 730S. And That's what they oh, said. Oh, yeah. It was on Motor Trend. It was like, uh, you know, back then it used to be a big deal, I guess, whatever the fuck it was. And... All of the comments were like, who's the narc? Who's the narco? Who's oh the who's the cartel guy? Oh like it, all of them. And I remember just laughing at it like it's so funny that people think that a rich guy from Mexico has to be a cartel guy, whatever. So when the pressure came in from like the Senna and all that stuff, and yeah, I'm yeah. reading these comments, I had already been working on because a lot of people when I started doing car videos, and this is before anyone understood that anyone can just hop on YouTube and that there's a lot of people with money, it was rare because people used to be really ashamed of like showing yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. wealth. It used not it used to not be a trend. Now it's completely the opposite, which will I need to ask you about right now. Sure. Where everybody that has like twenty dollars are like, I'm gonna put everything in a car, and just fucking open a YouTube channel, apparently. That's the number one thing. But back then people were ashamed for some reason. And I remember growing up, part of the top gear thing was Whenever I have the fucking money, I'm going to show people what the fuck these cars are all about and how cool it is to own them and whatever. And one day I had money and I did it. But uh, uh, what, I, what I never thought about in that scenario was they're all going to want to know everything about your life. They all need to know how you make your money. They all need to know this. So I was like, I made my money like this. And people were like, I don't believe you. I was like, dude, it's so easy. Let me show you. And I went on and I opened all of these businesses again to be able to make it again, right? So, mm -hmm. like, the Mezcal came about that. Like, fucking that came about that. Our water company came about that. Like, the watches came about that. Yeah, yeah. All of this shit that's now, like, a proven whatever successful business. And people just, like... And by the way, once I did it and I got there, like, our water in Mexico is in over 20,000 stores. Damn. It's Congrats. fucking epic. Thank that's you. That's insane. Thank you. It's really cool. Like Costco, Walmart, Oxos, Sam's Club, like everything you can imagine. That's a dream I, I would have never in my life imagined because I made the biggest businesses in my life in the period that I was like, let me show you how to do business. And when I did it, people were like, fuck you. Shut the fuck up about that. Show me the cars. He's like, what? Yeah, yeah. You motherfuckers told me that you wanted to see that. I did it in front of all of you. Now you all are like, shut the fuck up and do car things, you idiot. I was like. I'm losing, like, I am an idiot. What the fuck am I doing? You so, pretty much just need to follow what you want to do because, 100%. one, it comes off on camera like you're enjoying yourself. Yes. And two, no matter what, there's going to be a vocal group oh. that is like, oh, I, I look too Jewish. My hair is falling out. You uh, you're fat, are the you're responsible thin, like, of what's going you know, on in Palestine. No, yeah, I'm just yeah. Kidding. I mean, who knows? Uh, that could be a comment on this video. You never but yeah, know. I mean, it, it's, never, it's never good enough. But then, then there are the amazing supporters that, yeah, that are dedicated and, and no leave doubt. good comments. But yeah, reading comments can whew, destroy you. That's destroy why you. I tell everybody. Sergio knows this. No reading comments. Yeah, yeah. I'll go and 
read like the first five top trending whatever and just give them a like because i want people to know that i appreciate them but no fucking way i'm reading these things i feel like i i'm about to read all the ones on this because it's our first episode so <laughs> if there's not a second one it's because i'm curled up in a ball i'm having crying. a mental breakdown yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it, 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 the common thing is so strong and a lot of people don't realize this but the reason why everybody does the same thing on tiktok and there's no individual individual individuality or individualism whatever it's called like you're not being your own self and you're copying everything that you're seeing on youtube it's because of this because everybody's terrified of being criticized and they go the easy route and the easy route is always just take in uh the the way that you've seen already been proven don't worry about that yeah this guy's just sound. operating a chainsaw There's, outside right now my guy's just like cleaning everything jose's outside just in juanito like helping with the lawnmower so if you guys can hear a little bit but no the microphones are too sensitive so don't stress about that uh so yeah the comments are like fuck you <laughs> what is happening yeah, don't, worry. <laughs> don't worry about it don't worry about it they're tearing down the neighbor's house and by the way there's not even a, a, there's not even like grass anywhere around yeah here. yeah yeah Everything the guy just has like all the, all these tools operating for no I'm, reason i'm pretty sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure he knows that we're recording yeah he's yeah like, he's like this nope. pod, this podcast is not <laughs> is not happening right no, now. no you're good so you streamlined the cars and then now you're you're growing your collection to a degree, anyways, you just got a 765 LT Spider. So yes and no. I I never wanna uh, unless I have a trillion dollars. Yeah, but yeah. even even then, my priorities are so different now. I really legitimately enjoy so much of the creative process of creating something and doing a business and and putting everything on your shoulders and going like I'm risking it all, yeah, but yeah. without risking it all now because I've like I, I'm at that point right now. I have like a brand new project that I'm working on which is I've never been this excited in my life and I'm doing oh, it all congrats. on my own. And thank you that this podcast and that's it's the this project. podcast. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Never done anything like this before. And by the way, I said all on my own and you get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so n- now I can do certain different things without worrying. I've never known. And this is something that people don't understand. I've never had stability because I'm a successful idiot. I get to get into something, I get to do something and I do well, but then I never plan ahead. I, Mm -hmm. I I never plan. I, I, I've never planned ahead in my life either. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I'm doing everything planning ahead, which is so much, by the way, so much easier. If you, if anyone's watching this and need to learn something, just fucking plan ahead, dude, your life. Not like, don't just know that you're going to kill it. Just plan a little bit. And then shit goes really, really well, and you don't have to stress about anything ever, ever in your life. I used to be a, I can do anything, nothing can stop me type of guy. And thank God I never had like a bad experience where, fuck, I lost it all. What the fuck am I going to do? But I've had bad experiences in the way of, uh, well, now if I wanted to do that, now I can't do it because I'm doing this and I haven't really gotten to the point where, I can start doing those things that I want to do. So it like takes away from one place and puts in another. And instead of doing that, you can just find a way of just covering all of your needs. Yeah. Yeah. As far as like growing a collection and cars and whatnot, I want to have three, four cars tops. That's my, my yeah, no, you I can't feel drive like- them, dude. And, and, and also it's really, and this is something no one, uh, you understand because you have so many cars, but when you have a favorite in the garage, and you have a lot of options, that's all you drive. Yeah, yeah. 100%. What's the fucking point of 100%. everything else just sitting there like an idiot? Unless you're buying them like art and you have pieces of art or collectibles. Awesome, dude. But if you're just buying them because you want to drive them and enjoy them, you're kidding yourself. You're always going to go into your favorite car. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I knew that when I bought the Senna, I was planning on getting rid of everything because I was like, I'm never driving anything else. Thank God I didn't because fucking thing burned down 11 days after I got it. It was only 11 days? It was only 11 oh, days after that. I got wow. it. Wow. How many miles do you think you put on it before I that? had 500 miles on it. Oh, you drove it 500 miles yeah. in 11 days? All right. That, that's You got some use out of it. Dude, I remember Nick at uh, McLaren Newport would message me. He's like, I can't. Do you not have a job? You're just. Showing the car all fucking day. I'm like, I love this fucking thing. I mean, you dude. used it so hard that the car just gave it up. Just on gave, you. It was like, nah, son. Was, no Can't one's ever used a Senna that hard before. So, yeah. And it just caught on fire and whatever. And 
yeah, all of those things made me want to go away. And also I wanted to do like the, the I, I really wanted the new challenges to be completed because the, the business of creating these new companies and working yeah, with yeah. them and all of it, it's so much fucking work and no one understands that. So that being done, that being behind us and now being able to have everything in autopilot is awesome. But I also wanted to talk about business because that's at the end of the day, everyone fucking asked me, what do you do for a living? How do you do it? I did it. And then I went and talked about it. That's what I wanted to do. So I did that. I was really pissed off at the English audience, though. So I didn't do it really uh, from that point of view. And I was and because really of resentful. the negativity or because of the negativity. Yeah. With all of the. Um, between the Senna and it's like you want to do all of these business who the fuck do you think you are it's like just anyone looking for you know I just want to do whatever I want but, but then again it was just a mistake that I made it yeah. seems like the internet kind of takes a narrative and runs with it and I, I can never figure it out but like some person will just come up with something and then everyone will be like that's the oh, thing and can I tell you something Parker's that Salamandran's that and it's so and hard and then there's Reddit articles and, th and then there's I mean it just and the problem is how you don't want to get into drama people create it for you I see this with my friends like for example with my friend Hookah in Mexico mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't done a video with him in I don't know how long, but it's because I haven't done videos for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are like, you guys are not friends anymore. Yeah, yeah. And then they post all these comments creating like this. I mean, I'm texting my guy every single fucking day. We're business partners in all these businesses, whatever. And they just try no matter what. They just try all fucking day to create that drama. And when they finally get to you and you answer, you're like, oh, what a drama queen. This guy's a drama queen. <laughs> It's like, are you fucking kidding me? So you can never have them all happy. This is why they can go fuck themselves in a nice way, right? Like we all and, and everybody watching should do your own life. Never listen to anybody else. Just do whatever makes you happy. But you're right about the narrative. Because then what do you do? Do you make a video or not talking like clarifying the bullshit? Do you it, or not? It's, what do you do? It's so like, let's hard. I, so gen I had genuinely I, I've done both ways. And it, it's it always feels a little bit like a lose lose. So I had, uh, uh, I would always ignore it. Yeah. I would always That's just, probably the genuinely the best solution. It's and, not. And, Can no? I tell you something? Okay. It Never is mind. not. I just learned that. Okay. It is absolutely not. I thought ignoring it would be the best solution uh -huh. because then you have to deal with it. But for the rest of your life, people will always be asking those questions, keep pushing those buttons, and more and more lies can come out about you. Fair. Yeah. And because you're not saying anything, people will say this guy is guilty. Therefore, he's not saying anything. I actually didn't want to say uh, I didn't want to do any videos about it or anything. And Baller Busters mm -hmm. kept messaging me on Instagram, which they expose all fucking fraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, dude, everyone that page is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, it's fucking <laughs> incredible. They're like, dude, every day everyone sends me something about you to expose you. Like, what the no fuck? No way. You you just need to clarify whatever the fuck is going on. And there's a guy. That has been making up these insane stories. My grandfather was a drug lord and he killed all these people. <laughs> and and then my I murdered my dad. By the way, my dad no died way. when I was four. Then he said I murdered my dad for his money. And then I ran away once I got the money to the U.S. with my mom. Which, by the way, when I was like a baby, I moved to the U.S. when I was like teen. Like, there's not, you, it couldn't be easier to just go like, how is anyone believing this shit? So this dude... Kept going at it and like then, by the way, now it got to the point where it's ridiculous, right? He's saying that my mezcal is poison, that I'm selling poison to people. No way. That, you oh, become yeah. a conspiracy theory. That my water, that uh, I said that my water cures cancer, and which, by the way, would be an absolute crime with uh, uh, publicity. Uh, yeah, yeah. Governance, that, right? Like, <laughs> so I would never do that just by that's myself. literally a crime. Yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, that would be the crime. What else? That my watches, they're made in China and that I don't make them because China is duplicating our watches. Cause no way. Cause that's, a, that's a sign of success. Uh, yeah, but they also did it with my hats in Mexico. That's what people don't understand. Like there was like places where they would say fake swipe hats. Too. Yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking like that's a success. 100%. But when someone like just spins it like, no, you are the one copying them. All of your products are bullshit. And I said, these claims are so stupid. How is anyone going to believe him? Everybody was like, yeah, absolutely. So Baller Busters tells me this. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to make one video just clarifying everything, even though it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. 
So I did it. Everybody was like, all right, that's it. Thank you. And they just left me alone. The guy keeps making videos, but now everybody's like, these videos are hilarious because now he's ridiculous. He was saying, I got sued by all these people. And then he posted like a fake lawsuit. No way. And the lawsuit is like written like a fucking child. And the number in the lawsuit, you just Google it. And it shows what lawsuit it is. It's like a lawsuit between a baby by something Beverly Hills company and someone else. And it's, it's, it's just so ridiculous. But people will fall into anything. So it's actually good to just talk about it. It, it sucks in the, at the time because then you're like, who the fuck are these people that I need to justify yeah, yeah, yeah. who I am? But I think it's worth it. And I mean, we all live it, right? If you're in front of the camera, and I think even regular people now are scared of it, that people will always make something up about you, that people will want to fucking destroy you and bring you down. One, ignore it all of the shit, and if it gets to a point where it's ridiculous, just clarify it. I don't think it's bad. And I would have never said that years ago. But altogether, just left because I was tired. I needed, like, I, I, I lost my 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 passion for finding, like, newer, cooler cars. I was mm -hmm. so tired of it. Everybody was such a fucking piece of shit towards the end. Like, people stepping on your shoulders. And I, I was like, how is that possible? I've given these people... I've put hundreds of thousands of dollars in videos just for people to have for free. And yeah, that's enjoy. the wild part is that we're doing it because we like it and we're yeah. passionate about it. And then it's free. And it's some people treat it as if they paid their life savings to watch this oh, video yeah. and no. we took it from them. And then some people, some people will even tell you, right? Like, you owe everything to us. Without us, you're nothing. It's like, what in the fuck? fuck are you saying dude you go to the movies and pay brad pitt who's a trillionaire 20 dollars for the for the fucking ticket you buy the movie in itunes like it's crazy it's actually just like the lack of self awareness from everyone so i want to say all these years i've been gone i want to know what's been going on dude because yeah. legitimately i don't understand anything i feel like everyone now has a channel what's your take on what the car thing is now on online well, I have to say I'm super excited that you're back I hitting the ground you. running with car videos uh, just because that's a personal passion of mine. Uh, Likewise, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously, uh, it, it's awesome you're doing finance videos as well. But just from a content perspective, I'm like stoked that you're uh, – <laughs> You're like, no you one cares freaking, about that, but yes. You're doing freaking McLaren videos. No, I'm not yes. saying that. No, I agree. I agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, it has, the landscape's changed a lot. I think when I started, I remember people saying, oh, it's oversaturated. You know, there's already Shmi. There's Supercars of London. And then looking back, it was like, we were oh, nothing. There was not oversaturated. It was only like, eight of you us. Know, starting in 2012, there was not many people out there. And you, um, on the previous podcast we're talking about the fact that you started in like 2007 with tech phone reviews yeah and i think a lot of people don't realize that just because you see somebody explode and i didn't realize i thought you came out of nowhere in 2015 or 16 yeah. or whatever but yeah. really you were you were doing stuff behind the scenes the whole time yeah but i think one thing that's changed a lot is when i bought my gallardo that was like a huge deal on youtube somebody Mega. doing videos about what maintenance costs are like. What's what's it like owning a supercar? It was a and, virgin territory. And it was like a kind of untapped territory. And then yes. you had Doug DeMuro with the, what is it like living with his Ferrari 360? Now you've got people coming in who are like, here's what it's like living with my Chiron Supersport and 4,000 <laughs> other cars. Oh yeah. And I, part of it's super cool. I mean, you're giving access to people. Uh, you're giving people access to things you could have never seen before. Yeah. Um, it's unbelievable how almost jaded people have become with the stuff they see on the internet. It's oh like, yeah. Oh, I've already seen a Chiron race, a Remock Nevera and helicopters yeah. flying around. Which by the way, that used to be like, uh, uh, when I was writing like the show, cause I did a show called banging gears yeah, yeah. back in the day where we would put crazy shit. I had one episode where a friend of mine, we were doing a formula one car race against, uh, what fucking regular car was. It was either a Bugatti or something crazy like that. So we had a Formula One, whatever brand car, and this other car, and we also had a fighter jet on the side. And the dude owned all of them. And we were going to go race him. And back then, I remember thinking, like, no one's ever going to be able to top this. And now it's like every weekend, you see a guy that's like, here's my 80 billion Bugatti Chirons. Here's my 
35 Koenigseggs and my Paganis racing against my helicopter and, and Starship. Yeah. And you're like, what? And all of this is taking place on my $400 million mega yacht. Yeah, and he's filming <laughs> it with his iPhone. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And they have, like, proper camera crews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also I also see uh, there's a lot of rich people. Sergio knows this. There's a lot of rich people, like rich dudes, that go and film themselves and, like, try to do this Instagram stuff and have, like, crews, editors, people that shoot them and whatnot. And they get, like, 30 likes per thing and they have all this money and they just don't know what the fuck to do well that's what i'm curious about is is it i've already achieved the ultimate financial goal now i want to be famous or what well is, everyone wants fame fame is the worst thing in the world wouldn't you say that more than money? yeah i mean it definitely it definitely fucks people what would up. you what in your experience what's been fucking people up more or around you money or fame Around me, I would say fame, but I feel like for a global impact, money. Fame, by a lot. You think? Yeah, fame, by a lot. Even all, all throughout the world? By a lot, by a lot. I think power is the only thing that's beyond this, uh, beyond fame. But with money, when I started making a lot of money, you see all the people that come up to you, and then you recognize instantly who wants the money. Yeah, yeah. And then you treat them for what they are. You're like, all right. You want to fucking use me? Let me show you who's going to be used because this is why I'm rich and you're not. So let me put the dollar right here and people will go. <gasps> but the people that want fame, they're sneaky motherfuckers and they'll do anything and they'll wait all the time in the world. They're more patient. They're more ready. And normally the people that want the most fame are the ones telling you that they don't want to be famous. Normally. Yeah, yeah. You meet someone who, I don't want to be on camera. You're like, that's the dude that wants to be on camera 100%. Like 100%. And he's willing to fucking sell your soul for that. And to me, I found... Because I thought, and this is something that I've struggled with for a long time, which is how can you find good people now? Yeah, when yeah, I know. they what know what you do. Like to me, also, another thing that actually stopped making me want to do any of this shit mm -hmm. was because we were fucking people up in the brain. Like the fact that we were, I mean, at least me, I was buying cars all the time. People thought that was a standard and it's not. And, yeah. I see, and I see other YouTubers doing it now because they have to. And it fucking, like, it hurts me because I feel like I kind of did that. But the other one was I went to a friend's party, uh, Belen's friend's party. And we're in this beautiful house. It's a, like a, let's say at the $50 million house mm -hmm. that these people own. And... They bring out a cake, and when they bring out the cake, they put it on the table, and they go, and I go, are you not going to take a picture of it? And he's like, oh, no, this is not going to get any likes. I'm like, who gives a shit? This is your life. Yeah, yeah. Just post it. And she goes, no, I just, I just don't think it's right. You would never post this, for example. And I went, and I fucking posted a picture of the cake <laughs> Heck yeah. without any explanation. I'm like, yes, I would, because who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah. And that really fucked me up. I was like, wow, people are really fucking damaged, like, on the day-to-day. -day. And I think we're seeing now a lot of people that are coming on and misleading a lot of people. Whereas, as, as much as we try to always put a good face, we are who we are, and this we show what the truth is. And there's a lot of people not showing the truth. And then I also got to a point where... I, I'd go to, we would throw parties or we would go to parties and some people would show up and go like, why are you not taking pictures? I'm like, because I don't want to. I'm here like enjoying yeah, yeah. myself. They're like, so you're not going to tag us? Oh man. I was like, what the fuck is this? And that really like made me concerned. But now everyone's doing it to everyone. So now I'm like, all right, you guys are damaged. There's, it's not just my fault. <laughs> I can continue. <laughs> So I feel like I, I can give myself that permission. Now. I definitely feel like, yeah, while you were posting car content and then afterwards, it did get into this rat race of like who's buying a car every two weeks and whatnot. And I totally fell into the trap. It's not sustainable. It's and retarded. it was so stressful having an overhead that was ridiculous, having to that make too. all these monthly car payments because I, I didn't have some background beforehand where I sold a tech company for a crazy amount of That's money. That's what I'm saying. And I could just buy these cars as a joke. Like it was, <laughs> there's real financial implications. Yeah. So I personally enjoyed scaling that way back. One, because at, at the point I was at, I couldn't even afford it. It was just out of control. Yeah. And 
too, it's just, it's just less stressful. And I think content is going in different waves. Like it felt like in 2018, it was all about posting as frequently as possible and everyone was daily vlogging. That was like the thing. And man, pa- power to Tim Schmee for continuing to basically daily vlog. For Unbelievable. Like 20 freaking years straight. Unfucking believable. Um, I couldn't yeah. handle it. But it feels like now it's kind of going more towards a little bit less frequent posting and then the production quality of people's videos is getting better. I don't know if that's because of Mr. Beast spends five million per video and, and people think I, I actually think that's backfiring on people. Yeah. I actually think listen I haven't done that. But. I'm not I'm not against high quality content. Uh huh. I'm not against it. But it's not about that. As long as that's just a compliment and a spice. Mm-hmm. To whatever you're cooking, awesome. But if it's how you're cooking, wrong. And a lot of people do that. And now what we're getting, so see, I come from TV and programming and all that shit. So back in the day, we started, just think about entertainment like this, Broadway, super overacted, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. People used to watch that shit all the time. That was like the the form of entertainment. Then movies, less overacted, more real. Because you were like, damn, movies. Then TV, TV started to bring up more quirkiness, more realness, more daily situations into the table. Then reality TV came in Mm -hmm. and people were like, fuck Broadway, fuck movies, fuck TV. I'm watching reality TV because this shit's real. Reality TV got mega scripted, mega fake, and then YouTube became a thing. Mm -hmm. People were constantly searching for real, for relatable. And now us in YouTube, we did that for a long time, but now because there's so many of us and there's so many people that can make great content with like great eye and great everything, they're all making really pretty content and nothing separates you more from being relatable than creating perfect sure. content. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. The best example I can give you is how many people do the same recipes that you're on TikTok or an Instagram and you see like, oh, chicken Parmesan. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about cooking. So, yeah, me neither. oh, chicken Parmesan. And then you see the same recipe being done 30 million times and everyone just cuts it intensely. Like, yeah, boo, yeah, boo, yeah. Boo, boo, yeah. Boo. That's what's, that's not what it's all about. What it's about is learning something online or also showing how real that is. That's why I love, we had a show called Baking Bake. Mm-hmm. Where I would get mega stoned, mega stoned, and bake anything. And the final product was garbage 99% <laughs> of the time. But the process was the fun. Yeah, yeah. Like how ridiculous and how bad it was. That's real, son. When you go and cook something for the first time somewhere, you're going to fuck up. But instead, you're showing me the pa 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 in my knife. And like everything is perfect. And I think that's an actual advantage to us that we don't do that type of shit. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think the really fast cut short content on TikTok has created this divide on YouTube that I find really interesting. At first, TikTok seems like it destroyed people's Attention. retention and uh, ability to watch a long video. Yes. But then there's also at the same podcast. time this insane podcast boom where people are like, I don't really want to watch the 10-minute video, but man, I've got nothing to do right now, so two hours sounds like a great way to de-stress. I find it really interesting. It's like, Well, the, number one, there's nothing more powerful in the world, and this is something that I actually learned because when I went to New York and I moved to New York, I went to acting school, <laughs> sadly, and in acting, well, greatly, thank God, and in acting school, uh, when I showed up, I was just a regular kid, and I could fucking, I couldn't, learn anything i actually had a really hard time understanding when people explain me something when i'd go to the movies and watch a movie i had a really hard time understanding what the movie was about because i'm fucking retarded but (laughs) what legit fucking stupid as fuck and then in new york in class they taught me that i needed to learn how to sit and pay attention for three hours straight and i was like this is gonna be impossible by month three Three hours would go by like nothing. Yeah, yeah. And just like absorbing. And that's when I started learning shit like incredibly fast. And that's when hmm. my 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 mind opened to different types of learning and new things. And I legitimately, and this is something I 
I've been saying too about social media, especially now that YouTube, TikTok, and everyone's rewarding short form content. They're trying to destroy our attention so they can make us all fucking retarded and no one learns anything new. Now, the boom with the podcast, there are people that are not subscribing to that type of shit and they want to actually learn and hear something or have fun with people. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps what's getting lost a little bit right now is the 10 minute, 20 minute videos mm -hmm. because now you have the extremes 30 seconds or two fucking hours. And that I feel like right now it's where the sweet spot's gonna be for a little bit while people decide to either burn their brain with short form content. I don't watch reels, I don't watch fucking TikToks. Good for dude. you. I like I'm I'm sucked in. It's bad. That's the problem. Yeah. Also, while you're doing that, you're not learning anything. You're just on that thing. Oh and yeah, you're just frying your brain, I feel like. Yeah. It's bad. And I I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I, I do you think be. sometimes about you're getting fed what the app wants you to be fed. A hundred percent. So if you're just mindlessly scrolling, I, I'll, so, I'll give you an example. I'm not the one deciding what videos are showing no. up. No, no, Somebody no. else is deciding it. it and, and is there a ulterior motive to well, what you're being two shown? things it's done for one. The first motive is make you retarded and not pay attention to everything that's going on easy. And a simple way to justify that is whenever there's something going on for real in the world, important, they release the Epstein list, like list. They release the uh, what's the other distraction? The aliens. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna tell us about the aliens. Whenever something important happens, there's distractions. What's better than having a full time fucking distraction in your hand that you're addicted to, right? So that's one. Uh, and and the other one about like not being a conspiracy theorist and believing any of this shit is the reality is. They're trying to make you like in a casino addicted to their bullshit and yeah, you yeah, need yeah. it every single fucking day. And that's weakened everyone and created a dependency to the devices, which is fucking stupid as fuck Did in the illusion that everyone can make money on it. Like Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That part's interesting. Did, didn't you tell me that there was a friend of yours that like has headphones in at all times and is just always scrolling. Like he can't not he be on TikTok. He is that that's it scary. It's, I, I, in, I actually think it's on, it's inhuman. It, it's inhumane. I wonder if there's going to be TikTok rehabs. I, for the, I, but they, there they, should, they play slightly laugh. longer videos where you have to scroll slightly you, slower. <laughs> <laughs> You're weaned off of TikTok. Little by little. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. You can only watch five TikToks yeah, today. Yeah. I need to watch a TikTok, mom. Yeah. Come on. People are sneaking in phones I actually, to the rehab. I, I'll, you think it's a joke, but I think, you know how we look back. Uh, maybe you're not because you're way younger than I am. But when I grew up, and especially in Mexico, dude, probably when my mom was giving birth to me, she was smoking a cigarette. And I remember like her that friends. That makes a lot of sense. You know, her friends. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all of this damage didn't come from nowhere, son. And then all of our friends would come visit. I remember I had uh, some surgery. I can't remember exactly for what, but I was very young. And I remember her friends coming over and seeing me and everyone sitting on my hospital bed smoking cigarettes. Now we look at that and say, that's absolutely ridiculous and retarded, right? That's, well, or, or when people used to smoke on planes, we look at it, it's like, that's absolutely insane. Yeah. That's how we're going to look at social media in, in, in a few years. Like, it's insane that we were doing what we're doing right now because our brains are not equipped to do this. They need some purpose so that we can become fucking stupid as fuck and just sell you, like, the cheapest, easiest thing in the world. It's just a business. It's not crazy stuff. I, f I feel like it also, it, it, like, autonomous cars need to hurry up. Because if you drive on the freeway, like when I was coming over here, just every single person on is their on phone. their phone. Whether it's TikTok or texting or w whatever they're doing. It's, it's crazy. so scary. I don't know how everyone isn't crashing at all times. but Me either. Yeah. I actually think they're very lucky. I have a question for you because I was going for a while. Yeah. What the fuck happened with car prices, dude? How do you see the market now? How how did you see it 2020? How was the evolution of all that shit? At least in my lifetime, I feel like it has had the craziest roller coaster of all Ever. time. So like the beginning of the pandemic, March, April, May, prices tanked. People were freaking out, not knowing what was going on, uh, what the heck's happening with the world. So there were some deals. Like I got a new Cullinan 
for sixty or seventy thousand below MSRP. I remember, and I remember. By the way, what is that? Why are they just giving discounts like it's a coupon off of a of a desirable Rolls Royce? And then fast forward just a year and a half, and people are paying three hundred and thirty grand for a fucking G wagon that costs one hundred and forty. And then that was like, wait, what is going on here? And car prices were crazy. And then now it feels like it's coming a, a bit back down to reality. Well, I think we've seen prices come down back to yeah. reality, but I have really bad news. Tell I, me. I think this is the kind of bottom again. And Darn. I think we're going to yeah, go I don't like higher. that. I thought you were going to be like, I have bad news. They're going to tank. And that would have made me happy. No, that's great. But but that's, that's why. Because we all want it. This reminds me so much yet again. Like you just described it perfectly, right? Prices, car prices, when the pandemic happened, it was an instant drop on everything. Yeah. Even houses. Yep. I was looking at a house in Hidden Hills that I, till today, kicked myself in the dick for not buying. Was three million bucks on top of a hill, uh, almost 5,000 square feet. Insane, like five car garage. Shh. Yeah, yeah. Insanity with like windows all around. Insane. Yeah, no, it's and six. we were all terrified, right? And then a year later, that house was worth like $5 million. Yeah, yeah. And now it's worth like $9 million. <laughs> so it's gone like fucking, like a motherfucker to the top. And now I was on the camp of everything is crashing because everything is heading. Like yeah, the yeah. economy is slowing down. But now we are at, at a pivotal time. Actually, a very important time. If you're If people are watching and they're looking at buying a car and thinking, okay, Things are coming down now. Start paying attention to this. There's zero percent finance available to certain brands. Really? Like Kia, Ford. right now? Yeah. Oh wow, I did not know that. Oh yeah, Kia, Ford, all of those guys. Not only zero percent finance, you have to do a zero percent down payment, and you don't have to pay anything for ninety days. Wow. You know when they did that wow. last time? Twenty twenty. Oh really? 2020 before the mega spike up another thing that we have to pay attention is mary whatever her name is the ceo of uh, uh gm mm -hmm. she came out in january and anyone can find this on google like look it up and she said we don't want to make more cars we're good making less and getting more profit so we want prices to continue to go up did you really say that look it up wow straight up said it in front wow. of everyone this is the thing everyone is saying all these fucked up shit but people don't take him seriously, but it, it's true. So now we're back at the point where everything is corrected enough. No doubt. Uh, everything is corrected enough. And now everyone, 85% to 90% of people are thinking, I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I'll buy a house or I'll buy a car. Bad news is in housing, you saw interest rates went over 8%. Now they're at 6%. Yeah. The market didn't slow down until five and a half percent came up so we're almost at five and a half percent to pick up again so houses are going to go back up again and cars as soon as they drop the interest rates they're going to also go back up and and by drop interest rates i mean more than the market has already done sure and they will drop i mean I, my guess is march based on everything that we've seen again so you're going to get a second peak a second wave of inflation in prices so I think if anyone's out on the market right now thinking, this is why I bought my LT2. If anyone's thinking, maybe it's time for me to just wait and I'm going to buy a car for way cheaper. Perhaps there's another bunch of idiots just like you waiting for things to get cheaper. And as soon as interest rates drop, people are just going to start buying them because they're going to see the prices go up again. And I think that's where we're at right now. I think that's a real risk. I, I've always found it impossible to time. I think, and maybe that's because I'm an idiot, but... Uh, no, 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 I it's really like, hard. It took me 39 like, years. Yeah, the car market has just done some wild stuff recently that's unprecedented. So it would not shock me if it just skyrocketed when I'm thinking that it's probably going to go down for another year. I actually have an infamous video I made uh, when I was in Hidden Hills and I was talking about like, dude, I'm just going to wait because prices are dropping so much. I'm going to buy a LaFerrari at 1.7. I'm going to buy yeah, this. Yeah. But I never considered monetary policy and interest rates affecting the economy the way they do. Yeah, so now huge. that that also also make me made me become obsessed with understanding all of this shit, so that I know when a good time is. For some reason, real estate has always been my shit. I've always understood 
The only time I didn't buy the bottom, bottom, bottom was 2020. Yeah. And I remember thinking, it's going to go down lower. In 2020, Nick called me after my Senna burned down and all that shit. And he goes, I have a white Senna, whatever. We'll give it to you for 750 And I thought, wow. now you say, wow, right? And at that point, I thought, it's going to go lower. And we all thought shit was going to go lower. And that's when shit started to go up like crazy. Yeah. We are. And what I've learned is, rather than gauging, and you can also get a nice understanding of everything based on knowing the macro of things like interest rates and like where everything is, where the economy is and whatever. But the reality, the, the one thing that tells you the best, what the fuck is up is people because people are always wrong. Always. If there's an insane amount of people, because right now the, the reason why I started thinking about that is I'm renting this house so we can buy a house. We, we were like, just rent something while we find something and the prices are going to continue to go down. Now I'm looking for houses to buy right mm -hmm. now because last time that I did that uh, and, and I was waiting forever, I realized that right now people are in the same space. There's a lot of people that if you ask are waiting to buy. Yeah, 100%. Feels like everyone. Okay. What the fuck do you think that means? They're all have the, they all have the ability to buy something. They're just waiting. Yeah. And what are they waiting on for prices to drop more? The surprise, because it would be awesome if cars continue to go down in value, right? It would be awesome if houses continue to go down in value, right? But what would fuck you up the most would be what? If everything goes up again. Yeah, yeah. That's what, I think that's what's happening. I guess only time will tell. Either, yeah. either you're about to look like a genius or... Or a oh, mega I, idiot, and, <laughs> and my LT is going to be worth $200,000 before I know it. Hey, I'm taking a bath on mine, but it still drives <laughs> great. So here's a point of like almost embarrassment for me in the car world. I do not know all that much about Formula One, and I know you are a huge Formula One guy. I love I've it. been to uh, a handful of races. It's always been awesome, yeah. and, and I think I just need to get in the rhythm like we were talking about getting in the rhythm of filming often and whatnot get in the rhythm of watching uh on tv i've been to circuit of the americas a couple times nice. um monaco miami las vegas and Those it's it is sick yeah. every time yeah what how do you see this year going and what what do you think of i mean i feel like formula one has had this massive surge in popularity because of netflix it does and it's like in some space i've never seen before but i also was out of touch with f1 for so long that i think I don't so have any context number one i'm not claiming to be a, an expert or anything i fucking love formula one and everyone here is welcome to just comment whatever we don't have to be experts on anything right yeah. just it's all about definitely not fun. an expert here yeah same <laughs> thing it's all about having fun and enjoying yourself and I want to say, so if you want to get into Formula One and understand it, I feel like no one makes it simple. So let me just simplify the scenario that we're facing this year to go into it. And obviously, if you guys haven't watched Drive to Survive, you should, because I think that's the easiest way to relate it to the For sport. Sure. So number one, Red Bull dominance. Yep. Right now, the biggest concern ever since they changed the cars uh, and also before, because Red Bull uh, won a championship, I believe it was 2021, 22, 23. Yeah, 2021, 22, 23, because 2020 was canceled. And 2021 was before they changed the cars. So they changed the cars. And the reason why they changed the cars, so that everybody knows, because they say it all the time, but no one knows, it's because it was really hard to get competitive driving out there. Because cars were, if you were in front of another car, basically the car behind you didn't have grip. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Let's just say that. So the new cars actually allow for the other car to follow closer and actually have be more competitive. That's basically why they did it. But ever since they did that, Red Bull has been on a tear. They've absolutely railed everyone. Mercedes used to be the champion. They yeah, won. so what do you think happened there? With the new rules, Red Bull just nailed it and Mercedes didn't? That's exactly what happened. Yeah. That's, that's it. Mercedes bet on a completely different concept. And mm -hmm. the thing is, they all have AI and simulators. So they simulate how the car is going to behave in regular uh, scenarios, like in, in, in human scenarios, in quantic scenarios, but they don't. Sometimes you get in there and in Red Bull, what they have is a guy named Adrian Newey. Mm -hmm. Adrian Newey is a fucking monster and an animal, and he can basically see arrow. 
He can basically understand how to cut a car perfectly. He's been doing it forever. He started, uh, I don't know if IndyCar, but he's done in IndyCar some of the craziest innovations too in Formula One. Like a lot of the designs of cars are inspired because of Andrew, uh, Adrian Newey. It's that crazy. So Adrian is the guy at Red Bull in charge of the chassis of the car. Right now, what it's called that they change the cars for is ground effect cars. Cars that have a lot of shit underneath them that make them stick to the ground and not create crazy turbulence to the guy behind them. And Adrian Newey didn't need simulations. Adrian Newey just needs his fucking brain and a pen and a pad. Yeah, and yeah. He, he's able to do that. So Red Bull is in a crazy position. They also have Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen right now, and people will say it's just a car, it's just whatever. Max Verstappen is Michael Jordan at his prime right now. It's fun to watch. I like, like watching as as when it seems unfair and whatnot. I feel like it's a double edged sword because I like watching somebody dominate a sport. Just like when yeah. Tiger Woods was destroying everyone, or it's Brady. like it's an incredible spectacle to witness. I and Lewis had his run, and it's cool to see Max have his run. Yep. I mean, at the Miami or excuse me, the Las Vegas F one race, it was fucking ridiculous. That like was a great race. Yeah. That was an incredible race because the second and third between Checo and Leclerc yeah, yeah. was incredible till the last lap. But uh, yeah, so you have dominance by Red Bull right now. So before you had Schumacher do it for Ferrari, then you had Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg for Mercedes, and then you jump into the Max Verstappen Red Bull dominance era. I'm sorry, we went from Ferrari to Red Bull's dominance with Sebastian Vettel, who won mm -hmm. four in a fucking row. Then Hamilton, who's got seven, and Rosberg got one. And now uh, Verstappen's got three in a row. But last year, Verstappen broke every record because he dominated, and Red Bull too. Everything, like, fucking crazy. So all you need to know about this, uh, uh, this right now is the teams that are about to or maybe going to compete with Red Bull this year are Mercedes, which is everyone's expecting it, Everyone, if Mercedes doesn't perform well, they have a lot on the line. I think Lewis Hamilton will walk away if they don't get it right this year at that point. And they already changed their car this year for the first time now since they changed the rules. Mercedes? They're getting, they're getting a fresh okay. car. Gotcha. Because the one before was like a Frankenstein. They had the fucked up car and they modified it to work. And did they they limited the yearly budgets of the teams? So they put a budget Mercedes cap Mercedes had too. something crazy at one point, right? Like a billion dollars. 500 million plus. No, no, no. Billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Billion dollars. And now it's 150 million? 130 mil, Like between 130 and 150. I can't yeah. remember what the number is exactly. And it's really interesting because Red Bull actually found, they found out they were cheating the year one when they won and all of their fine was $5 million in like less wow. uh, era tunnel time. That's nothing. Yeah. You cheated, motherfucker. Yeah. Like you crazy. went over the cap. Yeah. That's and crazy. all your fine was this, but we're not getting into controversial shit. Also, they stole the championship for Hamilton. Now I think it's evident to everyone. Now they know it, but it is what it is. Verstappen's got three titles. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm a Hamilton fan. I got to say, I'm a Mercedes guy. Are you, do you have a team? I'm still figuring that out. That's fine. I don't know. That's fine. I mean, personally, I would love as a McLaren owner to see McLaren do well. Haven't witnessed it really yet. I mean, uh, in the Vegas race, uh, McLaren was doing well for a little while. So this I think is what, Lando Norris is cool, but it. it so I'll say, uh, I'll say Mercedes has a lot of pressure because they have two incredible drivers. Yeah. They're getting a brand new car and they should be dominant this year. That's what it's expected, right? Because they were the champions for so long that everybody's waiting for them to be the winners now. So now, if they don't do anything and they at least don't get second, Mercedes is going to be in a fuck ton of trouble. Ferrari's always been the joke, bad strategy, amazing couple of drivers. Yep. Between Carlos and Leclerc, obviously Leclerc takes the edge. He's an incredible qualifier, but Carlos has been incredible with all of his teammates, and I feel like Carlos Sainz is one of the most underrated drivers in the entire grid. Uh, yeah, you have Charles Leclerc on your, on your fucking team, but... Uh, Carlos Sainz has beaten every single one of these stars like Lando Norris. Uh, uh, he was beating Verstappen at some point when he was uh, in Toro Rosso and all that shit. And now he's putting the pressure on Leclerc. So Sainz is an incredible driver. So Ferrari has that pressure always, but Ferrari's always like the retarded, like the Dallas Cowboys. Doesn't matter that you have everything, dude. You will fuck it up because you're Ferrari. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true. Now, McLaren started like absolute donkey's asshole this year. <laughs> and they ended up being the number two team. 
they ended up with an incredible car. They fired the, the main guy that was there. I can't remember what his name was. He looked like a cancer patient. And now they got uh, uh, Andrea Stella, who used to be a Formula One driver. Fucking epic. And he's doing an incredible job. And then McLaren, you have Lando Norris. And they brought in, controversially, uh, Oscar Piastri, who came mm -hmm. in from Alpine. And why was that controversial? Because McLaren was looking for a second driver, and they booked everyone in the world. They went Alex Palou, the champion of IndyCar. They went Pato Oward uh, in IndyCar. They went to... Who's the other guy that they grabbed? They grabbed another guy, and then they ended up surprising everyone, just signing Piastri, who was there. Interesting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they basically had, like, the memes back then were, like, McLaren's drivers, and he was all of the grid. Because it was so ridiculous how many drivers they had, and it was so all over the place. So now they have uh, Lando Norris, who's incredible. But I think Piastri, you're seeing another Verstappen being born. Like, uh, Piastri has talent that I myself, I wasn't rooting for him because I want Pato to take uh, uh, his place. I want Pato to take a seat at, at a McLaren F1 team, right? Now he's the third driver, which is incredible. He's the reserve driver. But I wanted him to be the, the number two. I wanted him to go in with L Lando and be like the teammate. But man, after three races with Piastri, I remember because I go on these, I do these podcasts in Spanish about Formula One and sometimes like TV and shit. And I was saying, I think this kid is legitimately incredible. They were like, suddenly three races, come the fuck down. And he won Rookie of the Year. But dude, he is He's, uh, I'll tell you this, this is a raw, uh, like a, uh, one of those like crazy predictions. Mm -hmm. I think Lando Norris will leave McLaren because of Piastri. Because Piastri will fucking be so good. And Norris has never had someone that will eclipse his talent at the level that Piastri will. Uh -huh. That he's gone. So there's a lot of high expectations right now on McLaren for this year. Because they ended up with a car that was so good and so close to Red Bull. That this year, hopefully... They'll be able to be good. And now knowing that both their drivers are A-listers, everybody's waiting that. And then last but not least, worth mentioning, Aston Martin. I love shitting on Aston Martin and on, uh, on, on, on the Stroll family. My God, <laughs> unbelievable. That's another Jerry Jones type of team. They had an incredible beginning of the year last year that no one saw coming. They had, I believe, Fernando Alonso got eight podiums. Which no one, not even Fernando Alonso could believe it. And you saw like the renaissance of the man, the 42-year-old motherfucker that's an incredible driver still that I couldn't believe it at first. But yes, he's still right there. And Alonso was just carrying the team through the whole season. And mid-season, they had an incredible drop-off in performance. It was like when they were evolving the car, because not a lot of people know this, but every, every week or every time you race, you bring updates to the car to make it better. And these updates are what run you, your cap, either gotcha. low or high. So as they were modifying the car in Aston Martin, the car got worse and worse. So they got really lucky at first. And the reason why I blame that is they got Dan Follows, which is a guy that they brought from Aston Martin, from uh, Red Bull. Mm -hmm. And so he knew all of the little tricks from, from Adrian Newey. So they brought him in because he was under Newey. And he stole basically 99% of the shit. And once he, he had been removed from Newey for so long, you saw the drop off in performance because he couldn't copy him anymore. So now Aston Martin is under all the pressure in the world because they're either going to go bankrupt as a company or not. And they're riding a lot on the F1 team, which Lauren Stroll paid $100 million for who he's now, and not a lot of people know this, he's trying to sell it for 800 to a billion dollars right now. So he better fucking perform. That's what you need to know about Formula One. I think the rest of the teams are just, meh, worst of the, worst of the grid. Haas, absolutely the American team. Uh, I think Williams, that used to be a really terrible team, is picking up right now because the guy that's running it now, uh, uh, what's his name? Bull, James Ball, James Bowl, James, yeah, whatever his name is. Dang. I know it sounds terrible. Good for him. Uh, but that dude came from Mercedes and he's doing an incredible job with Williams and Alex Albon is an incredible driver, but they also have an American driver that they brought just because they think he's going to sell t-shirts. And the fucking crazy thing is not a single formula one race that you go to will have a Logan Sargent t-shirt on like, not yeah, one. no, I don't think I've seen that. No one. No one. So it's fucking pointless. Alpine was in, uh, was acquired, which is a French company, which used to be Renault. 
Renault. Yep. They used to be owned by uh, Renault, and now uh, Ryan Reynolds and like all these famous people put a lot of money into it. So now they're hoping for a better result. But they have two French drivers. They have Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon that hate each other because French people just can't be trusted together. And they're just messing everything up. So they're good drivers. They're not elite. They're not bad. They're really good. But they just have so many internal problems. I think they need to restructure that whole thing. What other team exists? Alpha, uh, Alpha Tauri, which is the little brother of Red Bull, mm-hmm. like the second, the B team of Red Bull, kind of like what Williams is to Mercedes. Those guys uh, have a new sponsor. I think now they're called like Hugo Boss, uh, Racing Bulls or some crazy shit. They have Yuki Tsunoda, who's a really good driver, great moments, great flashes of like talent, but not very consistent. And the other one is Daniel Ricardo, who needs to be replaced by Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson, the Australian kid that came in and just took over his seat for like four or five races when Ricardo broke his wrist. On fucking, but like, just like Piastri, that kid blew my fucking socks off. I, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Someone just jumping on a Formula One car and doing what Liam did and what Piastri has done. Unbelievable. And I think that's all that people need to know for right now this year. So there's a lot to be I, excited. I, I just about. learned more about F1 than uh, I think the last 29 years of my life. I think it's simple, no? Yeah, I that mean, was when, nice. When I, someone I just gives that. you the overview, yeah. of course, my fucking pleasure. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we go? Yeah, yeah. So I think to wrap it up, we got to talk about the best and worst car of all time, and I think that that might be the Cybertruck. So why? <laughs> Why? How? Did, I have a tattoo of the Cybertruck. Right no, here. you do not. Oh yes, oh, I do. Oh my God. Oh yes, I do. Okay, so oh, we, yes, we got to talk about friend. this for a bit. No, so I, I, I ordered it. it the day it came out, uh-huh. four or plus years ago or whatever, and then since then they came out with the Plaid. I got the Plaid. Yeah. Loved it for a while. I still love it. It's a great daily driver. I'm pretty frustrated about the tire situation. I've gone through six sets of tires on my Why? Plaid. I have a Plaid too. Do you have 21 inch wheels or 19s? The 21s, right? Yeah. What? How many miles do you have on your plaid? Like maybe ten, maybe ten thousand, if that. And you're on your first set of tires in ten thousand. Yeah. Oh no. But by the way, by the way, you probably drive like a complete asshole. For the first six thousand miles. Come on. I'll admit it. Yeah. Okay. I did a lot of launch controls and some and some canyon <laughs> drivings, but okay. but for the twenty thousand miles after that, just normal commuting, and it just keeps destroying the inner sidewall of the tire. So really? that plus the price drops made me from like this, like mega fan. I didn't want to be a quintessential like Tesla fan. Cause I feel like it's like, all right, a little gay. they don't, they don't like yeah. other cars, like internal combustion cars or like electric all the way versus I'm like the guy who didn't like electric cars, but I, I wanted to try it. And, <laughs> and I, and it's pretty freaking awesome. Fuck yeah. Um, but because of the depreciation and the tires issue, I'm like, shit, do I take delivery of the craziest looking car that's been designed in a while? The Cybertruck? Yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I, I also- Do you love it? it? Yes. I mean, you must. You got a tattoo yes. of it. But I haven't, I, I haven't driven it. Yeah, uh, me neither. I, what I like about it is he reimagined something that had been established yeah. for so long, and it's new. I love how Tesla's drive- I love the idea of the steering by wire, which is like a super short yeah. uh, movement on the steering wheel. I love the way it looks. I love... Dude, one thing that no one understands is being from a third world country, getting a bulletproof car is expensive as fuck. This comes standard being bulletproof except the windows. That is crazy. Yeah, so the part where you're really going to die, that, that part's not bulletproof. Dude, but. Well, you can just dodge. Yeah, I guess that's true. You know what I mean? Like, for real. Like, at least. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can just dodge. That's you what I do guy? during drive-bys. But I just dodge. That's normally yeah. what I do, too, during yeah. <laughs> in the hood. It happens all the time here in Newport Coast. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, when I was coming through the gates and everything that I did, I it's feared dangerous. for my safety. It's very dangerous. I'm glad that you made it. Thank I you for feared coming. for my safety that driving a, a Nismo Nissan Z press car that people thought that I was too poor to be here <laughs> <laughs> and, and that they were just going to lock me Get in a cage or something. I just, I just really, th- to me is I was one of the first ones that was like electric cars are going to be the future. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone no, was like, true. they're going to be a fed, blah, blah, blah. It's just so cheap to make an electric car and so cheap to maintain an electric car and to, towards the future. When you do high scale production for those, 
the cars are only going to get cheaper. And this is what people don't understand. It's not like you're going to want to buy an electric car. You're going to be like, how the fuck am I not going to buy one when they're so cheap? That's where it's going to get to. And while I agree that the price drop on the Tesla is crazy, but he also increased the price at some point. So he goes with the economy, which I Yeah, it's, it's a very I, interesting tactic. That actually makes more sense when the economy is hot and yeah. your vehicle has high demand, you take up the price. And then, like, for example, Horatio Pagani will never do this. Horatio Pagani started selling these wires at $1 million, and now they're like $5 million. Yeah. And even if the economy tanks, he'll never drop the price on the wire. I do think... Even though it's not something that you see all the time, it's something that the industry needs. Because according to demand, is what you should sell the car for. It sucks for people like us that we bought at the whatever. To me, I don't fucking care because I'm, I don't want to sell my car. I yeah, love yeah. my Tesla. But uh, I understand like everyone that's like, I'm 60 under or like 30 under, whatever the fuck it is, the number. Because I remember we were talking about like we basically bought it at the same time and we're under at the same time. Level. Well, I feel like it's unprecedented, which is like kind of Tesla in a nutshell, because there's no dealership network. So yeah. it's not like in the beginning they were the same price, but there was a 40K markup. Yeah. No, they were 40K more. And instead of reducing markups like they do at the dealership level, it's just a number on the screen on their website, which in a way is kind of nice because then you're not just paying unscrupulous dealers money just, for no reason just think about this you're he just go, paying the richest man in the world instead uh, as you should <laughs> as you fucking should because if you go to ford right now there are lots with fords with mac e's that can sell for shit and still over sticker really dude it's embarrassing like now you look at that behavior and you're like that's fuck if that was my company i'd be embarrassed because no one wants your car and you're still trying to tell me or fool people into believing that this is worth more and no one's taking it. Like, they just retarded. I just, I just think that's the right way to go. And as far as the way that the car drives, and I have, like, the autopilot thing and all that shit. Yeah. I think that's incredible. No, it's, it's pretty so nice. Comfy. It's pretty nice. It is, to me, is my favorite car in the world is obviously the LT and whatever. But beyond that, my fucking Tesla, dude, I adore it. Adore it, adore it, adore it, adore it. I think it's incredible that you can get in a four-door car that can go from zero to 16 under two seconds. Yeah, that it's pretty hilarious. And I think the that's the ultimate thing that, at least in my liking of cars, where Tesla fits in, and we've yeah. got basically the same setup, is you've got the really intense, loud, scary sports car that's for driving. Yeah. You go out to drive it in a specific environment in the canyons or whatnot and yeah. it's really exciting but then you've got another car that you can click a button and then i can commute an hour and a half in horrible la traffic without really thinking and then you know a wire pulls up next to you and it's literally faster than a wire oh you shit on uh, by the way you shit on conic six you yeah. can shit on bugattis you can shit on everything on the freeway and that doesn't make it better runway. it's just funny that that it's crazy is an element of no the car. i think it's just crazy yeah i i still i, I am i Whenever the fucking Cybertruck comes, definitely going to take it. I, I am dying. We, we, we order a Cyber Beast. Nice. So they're saying that it's going to take between mid-year to end of the year for gotcha. it to be delivered. But it was like the same thing, type of like same day. We got into the list. We got uh, the invitation. We already spec the car, everything. Yeah, but... you're way ahead of me, damn. Well, it's because of Sergio. Ah, I had an, o uh, an yeah. older order, but my order... Uh, 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 I asked Sergio, I was like, are you going to take it now or are you going to take it later? And he goes, no, 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 you can take it now. So he put me in front of the line. But the thing is, they told us, like, they literally emailed us, spec the car, ready to go. And then, like, two days later, they just announced, by the way, this is not coming until, like, mid-year, end of the year. Wow. Yeah, I would have figured that would be, like, okay, you get it a month from then. But there's no, there's no, like, actual formal statement. What they are delivering now is the dual motors, right? Yeah. yeah, nobody's really getting the beasts right now. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to fucking wait. I really want to buy a Bentley. I don't know what to say. I really want to buy a <laughs> fucking Bentley. And, I, and Yes. I feel like Bentley's underrated. I think so, too, yeah. right now. And by yeah. the way, $400,000 Bentleys right now are $200,000. Yeah, exactly. And like new ones. Panamera Bentleys. Yeah. 
Like that is the stupidest deal on the market right now, and no one realizes. Are you talking about literal new ones are going for that much discounted? Yes. Oh, well, no, 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 not new, new, no okay, miles. Okay. But okay. like 2022s, yeah, 2021s. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's the depreciation king. But yeah, man. But well, if you're buying it already depreciated, that's what I'm saying. Then, then it's with great. With 4,000 miles, yeah, yeah. dude, take it. Are you kidding me? You gonna get a Bentley tattoo? No. No. <laughs> no. I just like the innovation thing that Elon did. That's it. And I also have a Starship right here. Would you, sh if you met Elon, would you show him those things? No. Yeah, don't no, do that. No, absolutely not. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I wouldn't even know what to say. I know. This I, is a picture of your nude body by the on way, my arm, I too. Know, I know he's not the guy that everybody knows. I know he's like a scary dude in person, right? Like, I, I understand that. And I even feel like, what the fuck am I going to tell Elon Musk if I meet him one day? Yeah, I have no idea. This is I what I would I'd say. say this is what I would say. Elon, can I give you a fucking hug, dude? And I'd hug him and just be like, thank you. That's it. Because there's no way I can talk to a man that smart and just like make it be like, oh, thank God I spent a minute talking to this guy. Yeah, yeah. And his minute is worth like a billion dollars. So I, uh, you know, I understand where I'm standing. It would be intimidating <laughs> talking to him for sure. Who would you want to meet? Like, I would like to meet Elon, like, or maybe not I want to meet him because I legitimately think it's, it's retarded. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? But who is like that to you in the car world? Or do you not have anyone like that? Like I would definitely love to eat meet eat. Yeah, I would yeah. Love to eat Elon Musk. No, I, I would like to <laughs> I would like to meet him. I think I, I've been lucky enough to hang out and spend some time with Christian von Koenigsegg, who was kind of my idol in the car world just for fucking genius. innovations and yeah. performance. And he's like a really cool ass dude. He is. And like normal yeah. and humble and whatnot. Yeah. So I feel like yeah, if meeting Elon, I it's like I would be bummed if it wasn't like the most perfect interaction. Cause I, I feel like it would be really awesome to find out that he's like the most humble, cool, like chill. Elon. Dude. Yeah. But if he was like exactly the opposite, he's I'd like Steve fuck. jobs. Yeah, dude. I mean, you can't be that level of a, uh, uh, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. You can't be that level. Of, this is why I'm ready. I'm prepared. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm cool. I don't, I don't need the guy to be like, Oh, I love you. like Horatio Pagani fucking epic salesman. I love Horatio. He's funny as fuck. Uh, he doesn't care. Like, he's a fun guy. Like, to me, that was a great surprise because I was like, Horatio Pagani, and he's like a dude's dude. You know what I mean? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And b because he speaks Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Like, and also he opens up. So like, he speaks Spanish too? Oh, Horatio? Yeah. He's not Italian. He's, uh, oh, he's I didn't realize that. He's Argentine. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's from Argentina. Yeah. So we clicked instantly, instantly when we met. And with Christian, I met him. Liked them a lot, but then we had the problem with them canceling the cars going to track so that we could test them out against others. And I got upset, and now they fucking hate me, which I understand. <laughs> it is the price of telling the truth, son. And people don't like people telling what the fuck we did and whatnot. So I understand. But I, I admire the fuck out of Christian Von Koenigsegg. The only thing I wish I, he did before we close this, yeah, because yeah. we've been doing it for an hour. Uh, the only fucking thing I wish Christian did was continue with the same invention into the next car. There oh, needs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just one and done. There needs to be continuity in yeah. these products so that you can sell them elsewhere instead of just to, like, five Chinese guys that buy all of your cars. That's just my take. And yeah, that's, that's the only thing I want to say before we go into episode three. Anything else? No, that's two dudes, one car. And, <laughs> yeah, let us know what you guys think. It's super fun hanging out. Thank you for... Uh, Thank you. I, I don't know. Thank Are you, you for fucking kidding existing. me? And thank you guys for existing <laughs> yeah, thank too. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.